Now it's time to cut the stack. We'll go through each action in detail, but first we'll show you a quick run through of the whole process. The first thing that happens is that a line is drawn for a clean cut of the end of the stack. The line should be square across the stack, but deviations from 90 degrees can be accepted to utilize maximum output from the stack. These deviations in the first cut continue throughout the stack in the cutting method Logosol uses. When you move the stack cutter over greater distances, it's good to have the guide bar in the lowest position the stack cutter will be more stable since the center of gravity is lower. Raise and fix the guide bar in the highest position and bring the stack cutter into place. Make an approximate adjustment on the motor side along the vertical line using the adjusting wheel. Line up the upper sight exactly along the line. Tighten the sight on the side which is not waste wood. Make the final adjustments to the lower sight along the line with the adjusting wheel. The adjustment of this side of the stack is now complete and you can take a walk around the other side. The sighting rod can be mounted on whichever side of the beam you prefer and should be set at approximately the midpoint of the stack's height. Advance the rod against the stack and tighten the locking clamp. Move the cutter so that the sighting pin points exactly at the line and lock the cutter by pressing down the locking lever. Now you're ready for the first cut. Connect the dust pan and the power cable. There's a phase changer in the connection box. If the chain's not going in the right direction, turn the phase change half a turn with a screwdriver. Before you begin cutting, you should, of course, have read through the safety instructions. Protective gloves, ear protection and safety goggles should, of course, be used. On the control panel, there's a dead man's handle, which must be held down for the cutter to work. You'll also see a green start button and a red stop button. During cutting, you must always stand behind the safety screen. It'll protect you from chips which can be thrown up at you. Make sure that there is no one anywhere near the stack on the side on which the guide bar stops. Release the safety catch on the lifting wheel. Start the machine by holding down the dead man's handle and pressing the start button. Wind the guide bar down and start cutting. You'll be surprised at how easily and quickly you'll cut. Now you've uh, cut it for the second time. The first time was when you bought the stack cutter in the first place. Wind the guide bar back up, remove the power cable, and then step back to admire the smooth cut you've made. If any of the planks has been cut too short, mark it so that you don't have to look for a needle in a haystack later. Now it's time to loosen the screw on the site on the motor side. Loosen and pull back the sighting rod and release the locking lever. Move away the cutter so that you can measure out the next saw cut. 
Set the size of the cut you want with the help of the gauge on the measuring rod. Set the gauge on the cut and mark against the end of the rod on both upper and lower edges. Draw a line between the two marks with the measuring rod. Repeat the operation on the other side of the stack. Pull the stack cutter into place, make an approximate adjustment along the line if necessary with the help of the adjusting wheel. Line up the upper side exactly along the line. Now you have to remember to sight against the sighting pin which is nearest the stack you've measured. Otherwise you'll get a lengthwise fault equal to the width of the cut. Then tighten the opposite sight, line up the lower sight with the adjusting wheel. On the other side, you advance the sighting rod as usual, lock it, set the cut and lock it with the locking lever. You have to have the sighting rod on the right side here too, that is, so that the sighting rod lies against the measured stack. Now all that's left is on with the safety gear, connect up the power and start cutting. When you've cut through the stack, you should move it before you wind up the guide bar. Release the screws, sighting rod and locking lever. Take the measuring rod and check that the surface is true and that the dimensions are right. The margin of error is a few millimetres provided that the cutter is properly adjusted and that the chain is in good condition.